Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel That Model Railway Guy for another review video where today I'll be taking a look at a brand new industrial tank engine that I've been waiting to get my hands on for a while now. It is of course the Kerr Stewart Victory from Planet Industrials who I believe are relatively new when it comes to ready to run locos and this is their very first model. So this is going to be a really interesting review for me, not only to see what a newcomer to the market has to offer, but also it's an industrial steam loco and you all know that's very much my thing. Obviously I have the version in the lined maroon livery, I believe there was also a green, black and lined grey one available, and also Rails of Sheffield had an exclusive ROD one too. There's a next 18 decoder socket inside should you want to fit this for DCC, as well as a pre-fitted speaker too. Now I actually have a sound version here, but unfortunately the decoders themselves have been slightly delayed, so Planet Industrials gave me the option of either waiting to get the loco until the decoders arrived, or having the loco now and fitting the decoder myself when it eventually does turn up. Naturally I went for the latter option because I was just so excited to get this model, and I also wanted to make a review for you guys as soon as possible too. With this being a sound version though, that is reflected in the price despite the decoder not being there. Uh, the RRP for these is £245, although because I pre-ordered mine, I got a bit of a discount which meant I paid £215 for this particular model. And in case you're wondering, the standard DC versions cost about £130 I think, and you can pick those up from either light railway stores or rails of Sheffield. So with that info out of the way, let's look at the model itself, and the first thing to mention is going to be the weight. This thing is heavy. I mean, it doesn't rival my large diesels for example, but for a little 060 tank engine it's much heavier than I was expecting. That is mostly, I suspect, down to the metal footplate and boiler, which is superb and should make this a very capable model. As you can see I've got the maroon version with the straw lining, although I wouldn't call this maroon, but it's not quite red either. It's somewhere in between, but I don't think that's a bad thing, in fact I actually quite like the colour, and I think it'll work really well for industrial and light railway settings. I think there were only 10 of these locos ever made in reality, and one of them named Francis did actually carry this livery as well. The lining is very well done too, and you can see that all along the side of the tanks and the cab. It's really very sharp, and it adds a little bit of interest to the otherwise plain livery without it becoming too complicated. It's a nice splash of colour, and I think it's a great combination. The connecting rods are also red too, which I believe is something that only this version of the model has, and again I really like that. At the front you can see we have rivets framing the smoke box, and this is really nice considering that all this is metal. There's also a separately fitted dart and handrail above the smoke box door too, which are really great details along with the lamp irons too. There's more rivets on the buffer beam, and I have to say I really like the silver metallic coupling hook as well. I'm not sure if that's metal or not, but either way it looks great. The buffers are definitely metal though, and these are also sprung. There's a nice amount of resistance to these as well, not that they have any practical use mind you, but it's nice to see Planet Industrials have included these small things that we've become used to, rather than just skipping over them. Moving back along the loco, there's another handrail along the front which looks like really fine wire. Like the one on the front of the smoke box, it's painted black, which again works really well with the industrial look of this loco. Speaking of the look of the Victory, the dome is really quite an imposing feature of this loco, and then further back along the body we have the safety valves too. The different parts are all picked out in individual colours, and it's great to see the attention to detail that has gone into these parts. And before I forget, on the top of the tanks we also have separately fitted filler caps too. On the top of the cab is the whistle, and this looks like it's a metal part, which I always like, mostly because they tend to be quite exposed up there on top of the cab, and plastic ones can get damaged fairly easily. This whistle doesn't look like it's going anywhere anytime soon though, which is great. On the back of the loco we have more of that wonderful straw lining, which frames the cab really nicely I think. Notice the rails over the spectacle plates too, that's a really fine little detail there, and one that makes all the difference. There isn't any coal in the bunker though, that is just empty, although it should be easy enough to add yourself and has probably been left out so that each individual loco can be customised. Now I get the feeling that Planet Industrials really are treating this model like the makers of the real life locos, in that they're supplied in a standard format which the customer can then add to themselves to make each loco unique. Looking at the detail bag, we have all manner of additional footsteps, sandboxes and toolboxes too that could be added around the loco some of which are in colour with lining on as well. 
Now, I don't think all of these are intended to be added to the loco at once, but there's several options there so you can decorate your victory in the way that you want to. Also included are some builder's plates too. It doesn't look like the writing is legible on there, but these are still a really nice extra to include. Of course, if you do happen to buy this loco through light railway stores, they also do custom etch nameplates as well, which I think would make a great addition to the victory. Finally, let's take a look inside the cab, and you can see there's a huge amount of detail in here. The controls look absolutely stunning, and everything is painted really, really well. I have to say, it's so nicely done that it would almost be a bit of a shame to put a crew in there, because you'd probably be hiding a lot of that really nice detail. So that's a quick look over the Victory from a visual point of view, but now we want to know how well it runs. I've got it on the rolling road, and this is actually the first time I'm going to run the Loco, so it's not been run in yet, and it's still on DC power at the moment as well. You can see though that the Victory has a really impressive crawl, and that slow speed is just phenomenal considering that this is straight out of the box as well. Turning it up, you can see it's a nice smooth runner, even at the higher speeds too. It does seem to be geared in quite a realistic way as well. This is currently 50%, and if I go up now to 100%, you can see it doesn't get that much faster. I would say it doesn't need to go any faster than this though, and clearly Planet Industrials have opted to favour the slow speed here, which is exactly what we want for an industrial loco. Running in reverse, you can see it's much the same story, although there is a little bit of noise. Not a bad noise, just a noise, and actually as the loco speeds up, it fades away. I'll be honest, I don't think this is anything to be too worried about. It's not a grinding sound or something that's going to cause a problem, and of course it may go away once the loco gets run in as well. Bearing in mind you're hearing it in isolation here, it's certainly not loud enough that I think you'd be able to hear it over the sound decoder once that is fitted. So with this first test complete, I'll get the Victory fully run in now, and then I'll take it over to the modular layout for a bit of a running session. So here we are on the modular layout, and you can see the Victory is already making itself at home. It's now completely run in, and I've also fitted a decoder as well so that I could run it on the layout, and just like on the rolling road, it's running really nicely. I should say as well that it's got a sprung centre axle, which is really handy. If you've seen some of my previous videos from this layout, you'll know that a few of my 060s don't like these points here, but those with sprung axles tend to perform a lot better, and you can see the Victory is having no issues at all. Now, with this being an industrial loco, I wanted to give it some shunting to do, so I've got a few wagons over in the siding, which we'll use to put a train together. The Victory is very controllable though, and the advantage of having that great slow speed is that it makes shunting and buffering up to rolling stock really easy and very satisfying.
so generally, I think Planet Industrials have done a really good job on the Victory, especially considering that this is their first ready-to-run loco. They've nailed all the main things that we've come to expect from our models, and while this isn't the biggest or the most flashy release, I don't think it was ever intended to be. I really like the concept of releasing a loco in almost works condition for the end user to then customise in whatever way they see fit. The Victory may look a little plain at the moment, but with the addition of those included builders plates and some of the toolboxes, perhaps some custom nameplates too, I think each of these locos will end up having their own individual unique charm. Generally though, these models are going to look right at home on any industrial layout or perhaps even a light railway setting too. With my own layout being a heritage railway run predominantly by industrial locos, I'm really looking forward to getting this hauling a few Mark 1s. While none of the victories survived into preservation in reality, I don't think it's beyond the realm of belief that one could have accidentally been preserved, and so perhaps the sole surviving example resides on my fictional heritage line. Like I said, mine does have a sound decoder to be fitted when they eventually arrive, and when it does turn up, I think I'll definitely do a follow-up video to show that off too. Overall though, I'm really pleased with the victory, and I think Planet Industrial should be applauded for creating such a great model on their first try. I don't know if they have any plans for future ready-to-run products, but if the quality of the victory is anything to go by, it's definitely worth keeping an eye on them to see what they come up with next. That's it for today's review though, so if you've enjoyed this, please do subscribe if you haven't already, and leave the video a like too. In the meantime, thank you so much for watching everyone, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!